Thank you all for joining me for another webinar. This uh, this webinar will be on the eclipses of March 2025. Uh, I typically do a webinar presentation every eclipse season. I didn't do one last season because honestly, it just kind of left my mind. Um, I had just moved and life was still rearranging and maybe that's a good um, segue into eclipses and how when eclipses uh, touch on different areas of our astrology, we can have moves, we can have changes. And uh, for me as an astrologer, I, I, I want to say that I like eclipses. Uh, maybe that's the, the same type of way of saying I like, like Saturn. Um, but as an astrologer, for me, eclipses and even Saturn they talk about the time of our life. And maybe the reality is that I'm just really interested in time and how time unfolds and how time manifests. And of course, uh, time can sometimes be easy or not so easy or fast or slow. And with astrology, it's about the different seasons of our life. And so eclipses really mark the different chapters and seasons of your life. These eclipses are really interesting. I could say that for any eclipses, we are leaving behind the eclipses of Aries and Libra that really marked the 2020, the 2023 to 2025 timeframe. We will have one last eclipse in this series. This will be the solar eclipse in Aries on March 29th, but then there is our first eclipse in Virgo. So if you remember from last September, the time I should have been doing a webinar, but I completely forgot, um, we had our first eclipse in Pisces. So this will be our one of our entries into a storyline that will play out until the end of 2026. And in reality, we have our last Virgo eclipse in February, uh, end of February of 2020 seven which seems like forever from now but wasn't it forever from now when we were like wow 2025 feels like a different uh, time but here we are 2025 so i'm gonna go ahead and share the the uh share the screen share And uh, again, this is eclipses of March of 2025. This is your in-depth look at the eclipses uh, that we can expect, not just in March of 2025, because as I was saying before I started the screen share, that these eclipses are connecting to eclipses that go into even the beginning of 2027. So whatever is happening right now, it's not to say, oh my gosh, it's not gonna stop happening for two years, of course not. But it's to look for the thread. Each of you have your own lives. You have your own history. You have perhaps and quite likely lived through previous eclipses in Virgo and Pisces, whether it was 2015 or 16, whether it was 2006 or 2007, whether it was 1997 or 98. And I can even go back to 1998. 1988, 1989, and even go back before that. But uh, these are uh, one of the ways in which time unfolds. I was saying that in the introduction that we were just doing a few moments ago. And for me, one of the reasons I love, air quotes, love eclipses, and even I, air quotes, love Saturn, is that because they are the thread and needle of time, if, if eclipses really set the hour, they are the engine of time and Saturn really sets the greater arc of time. We'll actually go a little bit more into that. Uh, this is not an, a webinar about Saturn, uh, but in a way we can't talk about eclipses without talking about Saturn. As I record this, this is March 5th of 2025. Um, in my promotional material, I somehow wrote Thursday, March 5th, 2025. And so um, one of you uh, thankfully alerted me that, uh, that this was the uh, same Thursday, but no, it's today. Thank you for being here. And for those that don't know who I am, my name is Katie Sweetman. I'm a consulting and ast astrologer and psychic medium living in Maryland. So yes, uh, for those that don't know, I've just been living, you know, temporarily. I moved uh, past June uh, uh, to live with my father in Maryland. I was in New York for 20 years and God willing, we'll get back there. But uh, I actually started empowering astrology in 2010. So it's been 15 years. Astrology, empowering astrology is a Capricorn. I think it's born January 9th. Um, in 2010 to show people how astrology and consciousness can help us live better and more soulful lives.
So this is our agenda for today. And this is just sort of give us a quick overview. Um, what are eclipses? We need to define what they are because I realize uh, that astronomy, astronomy is, astrology is first astronomy. So we need to make sure that we have our astronomy down so that we understand it. And, uh, you know, this idea of the needle and thread of time, which I've already mentioned, and even what are the lunar nodes in Pisces and Virgo about? Because uh, that this is something new. The nodes have been in Pisces and Virgo since January 11th of 2025. And to see how perhaps these eclipses connect to different points in time and maybe even different points in your own life. We'll look at what these eclipses of March of 2025 are. We need to, to do a little bit of astrology to look at the charts. And then, of course, what does this mean through each of your signs? So introduction. Eclipses open a doorway. I think it's really important to understand that there is a magic to eclipse seasons. I don't use that word lightly. And it's a time where we are in this liminality of time, time bends people, situations come in and out of our lives. Eclipses punctuate time and space. Think about it, uh, whether it's the moon passing in front of the sun, solar eclipse, or the earth blocking out the light of the sun to create a lunar eclipse. There is a sense that something has been, something has been, um, you know, sort of punctuated. And so that's why eclipse seasons and even some of the periods that we'll talk about it that connect to eclipse season will be, uh, they really talk about these different periods coming in and out of our lives. Time bends and speeds up. I realize we're in a kind of time of retrogrades, but typically eclipse period and then Certainly, as we have stepped into March, it just seems like things are moving and things are happening quickly. It's just the nature of this energy, this energy that is moving in and out of our lives. And like I said, time bends and things are coming. Even people are coming in and out of our lives. It's a bit of a traditional look at, astro at astrology and eclipses, but I think it's a uh, definitely well-demonstrated look at astrology and eclipses. There's just something about eclipses where fortunes rise and fall. Pay attention to who's in the news. Pay attention who's suddenly in the news. Um, typically, the people who are not doing good things, you can sort of look at their astrology. If there is enough astrology that you can sort of glean, um, you will see the eclipses all over things. But... It's not just malfeasance, it's also fortunes rising. Just look at some of the Oscar winners, for example, that we had the Oscars last week. You have classic example of eclipses hitting some of the Oscar winners charts. And so the great stage of life readies for its next act. This is an analogy that I use so that we sort of take away some of the, like the OMG, Katie, what's going to happen with the eclipses. This is idea that our life is a stage. Our astrology is a setting, it's the stage. And so every time we get to eclipse season uh, right now, even though we haven't had that first eclipse, we are in, as I record this, we are in a lunar month that began with a new moon. This new moon was on February 27th and that uh, new moon will bring us to our first eclipse on March 14th. In reality, we've been sensing the sort of the movements in the wings even before March and even before February. And when we go through a little bit some of the other sections, we'll see what this uh, what are these different periods were showing us in advance of the eclipses of March of 2025. The eclipses of March of 2025 are eclipses of endings and beginnings. There's a lot that's happening in Pisces and Virgo, uh, sorry, Pisces and Aries. And even though these eclipses are just in, for, in Virgo and, and Aries, uh, we can't forget that the sun is in Pisces for that first eclipse. It's, it's a lunar eclipse in Virgo, but the sun is in Pisces, Saturn's still in Pisces. And Pisces and, and Aries are the end and the beginning of the zodiac. 
So there's a sense of like, we've come to the end of something. That's what Pisces season is. We've come to the end of the lunar year. So we've come to the end of the solar year, the astrological year. Um, and then of course, we'll have the equinox on March 20th, and it will be the beginning of the astrological year. But these eclipses are not just playing out within one year, they're playing out on a larger setting and stage. And so especially as we get into say Saturn going into Aries on um, March, not March, May 24th, even uh, Neptune going into Aries at the end of this month on um, March 30th. Neptune's a little bit more sneaky. Uh, Saturn's a little bit more obvious. Uh, Saturn going into Aries will sort of concretize and really punctuate, to use that word again, uh, the, the new beginnings that are set up by this solar eclipse on March 29th. We even have uh, very particular Mars aspects this year that will also activate the eclipses. And so we, this sort of beginnings and endings, we are coming to the end of the, an eclipse story that began with the first eclipse in April of 2023. I would say a little bit earlier in the sense that we had Saturn go into Pisces because Pisces is even though the eclipses are not happening in Pisces, they really are bringing in the energies of Saturn. That uh, Saturn went into Pisces, March of 2023. And even earlier than that, because of the different periods that I've already mentioned, uh, 2015, 2016, 2006, 2007, and even three months before these eclipses. So we were at the end of uh, no November, December, Sagittarius season, Capricorn season, and how those periods were even presaging the eclipses to come because they were three months before the eclipses. It's important to understand that eclipses happen every six months. This is uh, pretty standard information, but it's something that can get lost in the mix. So eclipses are not this... Uh, event that happens rarely. In fact, it happens like clockwork. And as I've already mentioned, they connect to a story over a longer arc of time. And this is going back to that needle and thread concept. They weave a story that connects to different moments and different chapters in your life. So for example, what was going on in your life 2015, 2016? What was going on in your life 2006, 2007? What was going on in your life uh, 1997, 1998? For me personally, without getting into details, those were giant, massive times in my life because I have a lot of planets in Virgo and Pisces, also Sagittarius and Gemini. So these are four of the signs that are really feeling the energy of uh, this Virgo eclipse to come on March 14th. Eclipses can portend sudden shifts and major events. It just, that's that's what eclipses do. So if you go back to some of these dates, for example, you may see major events and perhaps even sudden shifts. And because of that, eclipses remind us that our, there are forces that are greater than us. That's the thing about time. That's the thing about the cosmos. That's even the thing about the movements of the cosmic clock. I cannot stop the movements of those cosmic clock. It keeps moving. It keeps moving. It also represents symbolically the wheel of karma and the many cycles of our lives. And that's the thing. There are forces that are greater than you and even greater than me. Eclipses are vortices of energy. It's just that's going back to this comment about the magic of eclipse seasons. Uh, there's just, and I've been saying this even in my weekly videos, it's to be in the listening because it's eclipses, there's an energy, and that energy has been sort of rippling it out at different moments throughout February. And it's to listen for the events that are coming in. In March, even if nothing happens in March, we may need to wait till June. And June is one of those sort of hinge points to see what these eclipses are about for us. Our connection to the sun and moon, the twin forces of life, is momentarily cut. I'm, I realize I might be in the minority in saying this because I, you know, I do say this when it's eclipse season. Don't go out and look at the eclipses. 
like I said, I might be in the minority of saying this, do you, but you have to, I was going to say, like, be aware or have the, the sort of respect that we all need to have, of course, because th this is a major shift of energy. The light of the sun is blocked out. And that has a lot of deeper symbolic implications. And I would even say even deeper uh, spiritual implications. The eclipses, the, the lunar eclipse, especially in the last 10 years, like I've heard on the internet, people say, oh, it's the blood moon. That was, that's, that's the internet made that up. <laughs> we, we, I'm pretty sure we didn't grow up with the, this idea of this, the lunar eclipses, the blood moon. So people do kind of dumb things during lunar eclipses and they do dumb things during full moons. You have to understand that the moon is an antenna. So you do you, but I'm not going to go outside during the eclipse. It doesn't mean that I'm superstitious. It's just, it's just an energy. It's, it's like during the eclipse that was visible in North America, uh, United States, East Coast, United States uh, in April of 2024. I didn't go out. I had to take my dog out, but I wasn't you know, staring at the eclipse. So just a personal share. Eclipses will activate a certain part of our chart, creating a story that loops through different months as well as years. It's again, it's for you to start to become aware of what has been activated in that part of your chart. Where is Virgo for you? Where is Aries? Where is Pisces? Where is Libra? Because there's a story that is ongoing and a story that will keep unfolding. And so knowing where the eclipses are in our chart helps us to align ourselves with this reality of change. I will give you a personal example. So this is a little bit of a technical point, but my midheaven is 16 Libra. So my IC, which is exactly opposite, is 16 Aries. So these eclipses, Aries, Libra, were all over my chart. They were on the ICMC. And so I, I know enough astrology, I'm, I'm a professional astrologer, where I could say, well, you know, there's going to be a move. And it's not to say that my move to Maryland came out of the blue, but I I, I think be, before I got closer to the eclipses, I just thought it was going to be with the New York. But because those eclipses in 2023 and four were pinging off of the eclipses that brought me to New York in 2004, I knew that they were somehow going to be significant. And so here I am. So that's what I mean by the reality of change. I just, you sort of not resign yourself, but you just sort of go with the flow. You're like, all right, I guess we're, I guess we're moving to Maryland. The needle and thread of time part two. 